Now we're going to go over your testing procedures. There are certain bits of information that are very helpful for remote monitoring to know in order to keep the, the system working consistently and get a, a, getting a consistent result and a safe result for the pool levels, the chlorine levels, and the pH. There's, uh, the tests on remote monitoring should be called once a week with that set of readings. You don't have to take all of your readings from the entire week, but whoever does that test of the free chlorine, the pH level, and the alkalinity, and you can test the sodium level, but that won't necessarily be important to remote monitoring. Um, but if you have the free chlorine level, the pH level, and the alkalinity to report to them, then they can call into the system and make those adjustments if necessary. If, if they're not any adjustments that are necessary, then it never hurts for them to call in, they'll check on it, and it, it's better safe than sorry. So how this works, every test kit is the same uh, that you receive. It's, it may be bigger in size, from that standpoint, some of these bottles would be bigger. If you had a different test kit, it would look, it was a bigger, the only other option is a bigger test kit. It works and is set up the exact same way as this, but these bottles were bigger. That's the only difference. Now, in this test kit, there are instructions for free and combined chlorine tests. These step-by-step -step instructions can be followed in conjunction with the yellow label bottles in order to get your free chlorine reading and if necessary, your combined chlorine reading. The next step, our test, is the pH test. Once again, step-by-step -step instructions on how to read your uh, test for your pH level and you use the red colored cap bottles. The next is total alkalinity test, green colored test procedures or instructions, green colored bottles. And then the last test that's in here that would be pertinent to you, now the bottles are not in here, however, the sodium chloride or salt test. Because we're using a saline system, we're converting that, that sodium over to a chlorine model, molecule. We have another test kit that allows us to test how much sodium or salt is in that pool so that we are prepared or the, the system is prepared to convert that sodium molecule over to a chlorine molecule, okay? How these tests basically work, the sodium kit has everything that you need in order to test your sodium level. You take this vial, and you can take a sample from the sample jar on the controller. The you wanna go ahead and do it? Yeah, that'd be best. You wanna make sure that your vial is relatively wiped out, relatively clean, but one thing to do is we always recommend taking a sample cleaning out, rinsing out the vial. And then for your sodium, you want to fill the sodium level up. There, there are hash marks or indicator marks on the bottle. Now all of, if you miss anything, all of these step-by-step -step instructions are on the test kit itself. But we're gonna take this vial, and we wanna get about a 10 milliliter sample of water. I'm high on here, I've gotten too much, but we just level it off to 10 milliliters. And then we are going to take our R0630 chromate indicator. And you're going to add one drop of the yellow stuff. That will turn the solution yellow. All that's doing is it's in, it's, it, that chemical is uh, attaching to the sodium molecules or the salt molecules. And then we're going to take our silver nitrate reagent, number R0718, and we're going to add one drop at a time until it turns to a brick or chalky color. It's going to be a kind of a, a reddish gray, or I'm sorry, a reddish brown, or, or it's going to look like brick. Two drops. I'm going to add one more just for good measure. 23 drops, 
and then each drop is 200 parts per million of sodium. So if we take 23 times 200, then we've got 4,600 parts per million of sodium. On average, in a pool, I believe that the number that we're looking for is anywhere from 4,000 to 5,000 parts per million. Now, that's what our system, like we like to see the sodium level at that level for our system. Um, when you have other pieces of equipment on your machine, for example, your heater, your heater. I don't know what your manufacturer allows for salt levels or sodium levels for a heater. To, if it would void any warranties or anything of that nature, that's something you have to refer to your, your uh, heater manufacturer on. But typically, if uh, 4,000 to 5,000 parts per million uh, in our training and our con uh, uh, discussions and, and reference with all, uh, as many of the manufacturers of the heaters as we can, that is a safe range. That's what we've always been told. So unless we hear otherwise with new heater systems that come out, then uh, we always refer back to the manufacturer's recommendations on uh, what what they are willing to accept. However, on average, out in the industry, that has always been considered a safe range. Okay. So we've taken that test and we're done. We know our sodium level. Now, sometimes remote monitoring might ask for that reading, but if they don't, it's not a big deal. It's more or less along the lines that you know whether you need to add some more salt. Now, there's also a salt sodium addition chart that we put up here. So this goes by how many pounds of salt you need to add to your pool is roughly 14,000 gallons. So if our reading is at, let's say it was at 4,000 and we wanted the, the salt to be at 4,800, we would need to add 23 more pounds of salt in this green column. We highlighted this green because this column pertains to your, your size of body of water. Quite all right, not a problem. So this should help with the sodium, uh, to, to maintain a sodium level. Remote monitoring typically isn't overly concerned with the sodium level. That's more for your, so that we, we know here on site that there's enough sodium in the water for the, the chlorine stack to convert it over. Okay. It's directly to the pool. Yes, sir. If it's at 25 pounds. You add directly to the pool all and you let it dissolve. Yeah, and it doesn't take long for this, uh, for the, the salt to dissolve. Uh, that was my next they don't settle to the bottom and stay there for the No, no, what's gonna, your, your pool has a pump, a circulation pump on it, so it's circulating that water, all of the water, uh, over a certain uh, flow rate. So if, even if that salt were to settle to the bottom of the pool, which when it dissolves, it does settle at the bottom somewhat, but your pool, your circulation pump, is circulating all of that water, all gallons of it, you're gonna go through it, uh, at least one full circulation in a 24 hour period. Yeah, that was gonna be the next question. Yep. And so it's mixing up. It'll, it'll, it'll be mixed up within 24 hours minimum. It's usually faster. And there's no residue? Uh, Maybe there? No, no. Um, I, I don't believe there's any residue. I mean, it. I don't know 100% if there's residue, but the residue, if there is any salt residue, it's not gonna harden it. Right, okay. Okay. I don't